Hello and welcome to Team A1's plan to mitigate COVID-19 transmission at the Maplewood Nursing Home. Before I begin, I'd like to thank our professors for their time this week, as well as my teammates who through lively discussion and hard work have come up with this plan and put together this poster. So some quick background information. This is a 350 bed nursing home uh, with semi-private rooms undergoing a COVID outbreak. There's currently 107 positive residents, 20 positive staff, and we're at 93% occupancy. Each room has its own HVAC unit, but common areas including hallways have forced air ventilation. So the primary aim is to separate out uh, sick residents from healthy residents. Um, in a perfect world, we would simply put all the COVID positive residents on a single floor that would allow for the maximum level of isolation. But in light of the fact that we have limited resources, including we're, uh, few staff, uh, and limited PPE, it, it made more sense to uh, work with what we got, so to speak. So the current outbreak is, is focused around uh, wards 2A, 3A, and 4A and B. So we expanded out the sick wards um, to wards A and B on the second, third, and fourth floors. And we uh, separate these wards out using um, ICRA barriers, as well as uh, portable negative pressure ventilation systems. And that way we make sure that there's no um, spillage of, of, of particles out into common areas. We also have a designated uh, elevator and stairwell for uh, staff working on the um, sick wards, as well as transportation of patients to different wards. Um, that would, you know, that, that makes it easier for us to move patients around if we have to. Uh, another thing that we consider some principles in, in, in creating this plan is the patients are currently under lockdown. They're not leaving their room, except for several special cases, which I'll elaborate on uh, pretty soon. Um, we didn't want to move patients around too much, uh, again, because we don't want to move around sick people. We don't want to risk exposing staff and other residents to COVID positive patients, and we don't want to overburden our staff who already have to take care of um, a lot of other patients, both healthy and, uh, and COVID positive. Um, so figure one gives a, a layout of the, of the nursing home. Um, the green wards have uh, healthy residents, the red rooms have COVID positive residents. Now it's not that simple, so figure two highlights um, our triage protocol in terms of cohorting people based on their risk. So to, to I'm not going to delve into too much detail, but we look at whether someone has been uh, has had a, a confirmed exposure to COVID-19, whether they're symptomatic or not, as well as the case in which uh, an otherwise healthy appearing resident has a COVID positive roommate. And finally, new uh, in admissions to the nursing home. We wanted to triage them to rooms depending on um, their risk, as well as keeping in mind the fact that we don't have many free rooms and we don't want to risk getting people involved who are outside of this bubble um, exposed to people who may uh, have been exposed to COVID. So that means locking people down with, with roommates as we await test results if there's no private rooms available. Um, so moving forward, uh, we want to, we want to, have a flexible plan because as the situation develops, as we get more co co uh, positive COVID tests and as uh, COVID patients um, either heal or pass away, we would have to change the designation of the rooms in order to make sure that we, we have enough rooms for a healthy residents while keeping them isolated from the COVID positive residents. So we will continue to monitor new cases, conduct contact tracing, and um, test people uh, depending on test availability and, and risk index, and then triage them depending on, on those variables. So some of the strengths of this is we're working with what we have to isolate patients, and we're not trying to undertake Herculean tasks by moving everyone to one floor or not. Um, we, we wanna make sure that our staff uh, have a reasonable amount of work. Uh, we don't wanna overburden them uh, and have them you know, burn out. And we also don't want to make, we don't want to put anyone at risk who would otherwise not be at risk um, in terms of uh, looking at this from a social justice perspective. Um, so we want to keep people isolated and only move them if they, if they really truly have to be moved. Um, and again, some of the challenges that we face is 
primarily the, the lack of resources as well as the difficulty of moving patients around. Um, so this, this plan helps to mitigate um, those complexities a bit. And moving forward, we would, we would look at um, staff, uh, faculty and staff um, contentment with the plan. Um, you know, if the nurses feel like they're being overworked, then we could make uh, uh, amendments to our, our protocol. Um, as, as the numbers increase or decrease, we could change the designation of rooms. Um, and uh, we could look for new clusters and, and, and respond appropriately. That basically sums up sort of the guiding principles of our plan. Um, the rest of the poster has plenty of information about the nuance of each particular step. Uh, it's a shame that we were limited to five minutes. There's a lot to talk about here, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask us.